All right, in this video, I want to show how to draw th threads in 3D in AutoCAD. We use this half inch, uh, 10 threads per inch pitch Acme thread. And we'll use Google Good AutoCAD where I already have the, the rest of the screw already drawn in with a four inch, uh, 0.4 inch uh, diameter uh, body or shank of the thread. So there's that 0.4 inch diameter. So the first thing I want to do is draw the thread form. Based on that pitch, we can take a couple uh, dimensions from the basic uh, shape of an acne thread. So in my right side view, I'll start the thread form. I'll put it right on the end of this uh, screw body. And we'll just draw some lines here to get started track above here. I'll give it some room before I draw it. So I'm just going to draw a horizontal line. I'm going to offset it by half the pitch, which would be 0 0.05. There. Okay, let's zoom in on that. And here, um, the sides of the thread are angled at 14 and a half degrees here. So I'm just going to tab over. So from 90 plus 14 and a half is one. 104 and a half. So there's the angle of um, where along that line is. And let's just, I'm going to go ahead and trim that off though. Okay, so I'm going to mirror this line for the other angle. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter at this point. Uh, this isn't the correct width of the thread, so I'm going to draw that next. And this line is going to be uh, 0 0.307 or 3707 times the pitch, which is a tenth. So it's just going to be 0 0.03707 inches in length. So that puts it right there. Um, I could move that over, just use my parallel snap if I can find it. There we go. There's the parallel snap. So now I have my thread form. Okay, delete that. Trim this up just a teeny bit. I'll keep those lines. Okay, so this time I'm going to take these three lines, the crest of the thread and the two sides, and copy it over one pitch. So I'll start at the midpoint and just move it over one full pitch here, so 0.1. That's how far apart the threads are going to be from any corresponding point, corner, midpoint, whatever. I use the midpoint because now I have enough information to draw the polyline that's going to get swept around a helix here. So I'm going to start at the midpoint here, come down. I'm going to angle it in, and I'll explain why in a little bit. This intersection, come back up to the top, and finish the thread form here. And close it. So this is the polyline that it will end up. I'll go ahead and move it. Being swept around a helix, right there. Okay. Now I need to draw my helix, so H-E-L-I, and I'm going to start right at the center here, and go to here. Um, don't have the right, so let me change my UCS. So the way to do that is just go to the front view, flip it around, all the way around. Try that helix again. Right to this midpoint, up to the corner where I moved the polyline. Okay, now we're looking. Um, the second or the top radius, same, just hit the space or enter. And then I need the length and the number of turns. Well, if I set the height, then I have to go back to the properties and get the turns. So I'm going to set the number of turns here. And to look at how long I have. Uh, for threads, I have uh, 3.6 inches, 
So add a tenth, right, 10 threads per inch. Well, that's 36 turns of my helix. So 36, and then I set the length to 3.6, and there's the helix that I need to sweep this uh, thread form around. So let's go ahead and view the sweep. I select my closed polyline, the sweep command, and before I select the path, there's one other step I want to make is set the alignment uh, right here. Um, AutoCAD will, by default, align the object to the object, uh, align the, um, the the polyline to the path. And what I don't want to do is is that. So I'm going to set the alignment to no, and then go ahead and pick my helix. There it goes. Um, it's kind of hard to see in wireframe. Let's go change that. So here is my Acme thread form. It looks a little weird at the beginning um, and at the end, but that end actually gets hidden um, once I move this over, I think, on my thread. I have some space here, so that, that ends up getting moved there. But um, before I go too much further, I do want to chamfer the beginning of it off. The end's not so bad. Um, I could chamfer either one, I guess, but in this case, right side view again. I want to set up a chamfer for this thread. So right on this corner again, I'm going to just draw a, another polyline at a 45 degree angle, I guess, um, either. There's no 45. And as long as it covers this, close it. I get to revolve that one around this midpoint here. So um, maybe easiest to just track um, straight down in this corner. Point two, that puts me in the center. There's my revolution. So now I can subtract from the thread this revolved polyline, which ends up chamfering my, my thread form. So it gives me a little run out there. It's still not perfect because I still have this sharp edge. What I would need to do with that is draw another helix that that sweeps a flat surface around and, and the helix starts at a 0.2 inch uh, diameter and and uh, increases in, in radius for the top diameter and just has one turn and that way I can I can subtract that um, solid from the thread. So I'm just going to leave it like it is. It's going to be good enough for our drawing. Move that up and we're pretty much done. That, that's how I would Five hundreds, so that's going to be my my thread. All uh, solid union these pieces right now. They're all separate pieces, um, but a, a solid union would certainly let's do that. Joins all those together. Now I have my threaded Acme screw.